What is aquaculture? Aquaculture is the control process of cultivating aquatic organisms, especially for human consumption. It's a similar concept to agriculture, but with fish instead of plants or livestock. Aquaculture is the breeding, rearing, and harvesting of fish, shellfish, algae, and other organisms in all types of water environment in controlled conditions. As the demand for seafood has increased, technology has made it possible to grow food in coastal marine waters and the open ocean. Aquaculture is a method used to produce food and other commercial products to store habitats and replenish wild stocks and to rebuild population of threatened and endangered species. The first one is marine aquaculture. Marine aquaculture produces numerous species including oyster, clams, mussel, shrimp, seaweeds, and fish, such as salmon, black sea bass, sable fish, yellow fish, and many other species. Marine fish farming is typically done in net pans, in the water or in tanks on land. The second one is freshwater aquaculture. Freshwater aquaculture produces species such as catfish, tilapia, trout, and many other species. Freshwater aquaculture primarily takes place in ponds or other manual systems. Generally, there are four stages of the production chain, starting in hatching. The first opportunity for aquaculture industry is a strategic aquaculture policy. Food security and economic growth are two main objectives that are commonly promoted for aquaculture. It, it is because the nutritional benefits of fish consumption have a positive link to increase food security and decrease poverty rates in developing states. Indirectly commercial aquaculture lead to increase food security by providing opportunities for employment and income generation for local communities. As a majority of aquaculture production occurs in developing states, rise in income leads to an increase in food purchasing power and more importantly diversification. The opportunity that aquaculture industry can take is a good understanding of existing aquaculture and its value chains together with the opportunities for and constraints to development. The successful production of seafood is just one part of the value chain. In order to succeed long term, aquaculture needs to be profitable and it is essential that reliable markets are secured with a potential value chain that ensures financial viability for all participants. These aspects need serious consideration during the design phase as it might influence key design criteria such as species selection which reflecting market demand, price and seasonality. System design which in turn influences input costs, margins and risk. Production scheduling, processing and transformation. Value chain analysis is now an established tool for assessing the equity and integrity of value chains and designing interventions to address any issues found. Coastal farms, this might mean assessing high value coastal line or sea space in areas that often have considerable alternative value, for example in tourism or other development. Therefore, securing long-term tenure is essential with the full support from the government body allocating production rights. On land, ensuring land tenure is equally important and development of pond farming or other forms of extensive or semi-extensive aquaculture are highly dependent upon a reliable access to suitable water resources. Therefore, robust agreements to access and share water need to be established in advance. The next challenge is pollution. 
The farming of marine fish produce waste in the form of fecal matter and unused feed. This largely nitrogen-based waste can cause oxygen depletion in coastal environments and a net loss of marine productivity in certain coastal areas. Additionally, the use of antibiotics, antifollants, and pesticides are all problems that aquaculture can introduce into the marine environment. Some of the solutions for this challenge is to use safe antibiotics. When fish are concentrated in aquaculture systems, there is a risk of disease and parasite outbreaks. This leads some farmers to use pesticide or antibiotics to treat this disease. To reduce their risk of disease and need for chemicals, farmers can put in place best practice for fish health such as regularly monitoring for disease. And the second solution is to maintaining good water quality. We have to make sure that the quality of water that will be used are clean and safe for the integral to the success of an operation. Fish life are totally dependent on the water they live in for all their needs. For producers to be able to maintain ideal pond water quality conditions, they must understand the physical and chemical components contributing to good or bad water quality. For my turn, I like to talk about challenge for environmental and aquaculture farm. For my first point is nutrient build up. This is the most one frankly talk about impact of open water aquaculture. Nutrient build up caused from the increased population of livestock at the sea in one area. This can deplete the water of oxygen, creating algal blooms and dead zone. Studies has been done into the amount of organic matter, nutrient and phosphorus. This just into the environment from shrimp farms. Estimate show 5.5 million tons of organic matter, 360,000 tons of nutrient and 125,000 tons of phosphorus. Bearing in mind, shrimp farming makes up only 8% of aquaculture output globally. The impact across all species assumed to be much higher. Some of the toxic chemicals that build up in this area such as a nutrient are toxic to many sea creatures too. For my second point is the effect of pollution on the soil. Aquaculture farms are sometimes abandoned by various problems such as operation, economy, hygiene and so on. When they leave the site, the land cannot be used for agriculture purpose and cannot be used for long period of time. In aquaculture farming, certain chemicals are used to treat water and the soil. The effect use of this chemical is cause soil from the former farm remain hypersonal, acidic and aerodic. In addition, the use of this chemical also modify physiochemical properties which can exacerbate the problem. The challenges in aquaculture is disease transfer. The farming of species in wild environment can be a vector for disease proliferation in the wild environment. Disease transfer such as in salmon aquaculture is perhaps the most reported instance of this phenomenon. The disease infection salmon anemia first appeared in JD in the 1990 and has not in other environments around the world. Poor biosecurity and global transfer of salmon larvae help speed the transfer of the disease from country to country and even continent to continent. Sea life primarily of the genus Leopteris and Caliges are another frequently not aquaculture effect. Sea leaves attach themselves to the skin of, of their internet within and draw nutrients for the body of their host. This is particularly damaging to salmon juveniles. Critics of aquaculture note that large farm operations established near the migration route of wild salmon can cause sea life to aggregate and jump from farm animal to wild.